Rebecca with the Nocturnal. How are you? I'm great, Rebecca. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And first of all, loved you in the show. Loved you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much for coming. Of course, of course. For it being my first time, I would highly recommend. Highly recommend. Yeah. <laughs> so the plot of the show is based on a real life situation, 9-11, and based yeah. on everything that happened afterwards, as well as Newfoundland town and the people. So right. did, you know, did knowing this help, you know, bring any insight into all the characters you embodied? And did you meet any of the actual people? Yeah, we've been lucky enough to meet quite a few of the real people that the show is based on. Um, I've met like Beverly Bass, the pilot. I've met Claude, the mayor. Um, we've met Kevin T and Kevin J, the two guys from L.A. Um, we've met Nick and Diane, the two people that fall in love in the show, the real life people. Um, I've actually I play Bonnie and I've actually never gotten to meet Bonnie yet, but hopefully I will soon meet this summer. Um, but it's really cool and really special to play somebody that actually exists because you can watch interviews with them you can like kind of see how they speak like check out their accent you know um and even though we're not doing like carbon copies of those people we're still making these characters our own it's it's an honor to play people that really exist and kind of share their story and throughout the entire show you and every actor you know played multiple characters so what was that preparation like and what were some of the challenges that you experienced during rehearsals yeah, so this show is tricky because we're pretty much all on stage the whole time. And we're like you saw, we're like moving chairs and tables throughout the show, like every 30 seconds to a minute to like set up a different scene. Um, and then in between those, we're also switching characters and accents and, you know, roles. So it's it's really, really fun to do because sometimes when you just cast as one role, it's like, that's the only role you get to dive into. So as an actor, it's like an actor's dream to be like, oh, I get to play all these different characters. I get to do all these fun accents, you know. But when you're first learning it, it's a lot. You're like, oh, my God, okay. Ooh, you know, so I'm like Newfoundland accent, which is like really unique. And I had never worked on it before. And then I do a French accent at some point. I do a, a Texan woman at some point, you know. Um, so we have a dialect coach who's wonderful, this guy, Joel, who works with us. And he helps us with all of our different accents. And, um, yeah, we like the script is kind of like, also looks kind of like a non-traditional script mm -hmm. there's like it's like kind of sometimes is written in columns because there's like so much going on at the same time so uh you know it's a lot but it's really rewarding and then once you're in the show for a while and you get used to everything then you just get to like play which is really fun <laughs> honestly I love like with the little like I would say like the costume changes in between, like someone will put a hat and then you see like the different, like the way that the tones and like the shifts of the musical were going, I was like, oh my gosh, I know this took hours. Oh um, yeah. Rehearsals and everything, but it came across well. Thank you. Yeah, and what's fun about this show is like, you know, a lot of shows will have like a costume change off stage and then we come on, you'll come on as like a new character. This show, it's like we just like put on a hat or a jacket, like literally in front of the audience and then just turn into another person. And I think it's fun for the audience to see the transformation in front of their eyes, you know, and like get to use their imagination a little bit more. Of course. And I definitely feel like it t touches onto the talent that the actors in the show, including yourself, like ha have worked on, like this is your craft and this is what you've worked on and you get to see that. Cause it's like yeah. the quick shifts and the putting your like the mindset in different places for the show, incredible. Thanks, it's really fun. <laughs> of course. And you know, you joined the Broadway company for Come From Away after playing the role of Bonnie and others on the national tour. So what was yeah. that transition like? And from a performance perspective, have you found anything to be challenging or easier? That's a great question. Um, so yeah, I started doing the national tour in the fall of 2019. And then we that, you know, we got shut down during the shutdown in March 2020. So we were shut down for like 18 months. And then we started up again last fall. Um, and in between that time during the 18 month shutdown, actually, my husband and I had a baby. So we brought the baby on tour 
which was fun, but also very challenging to like move around with a baby all the time and like all the baby gear and all that stuff. So um, when this opportunity came to come back home to New York and do the show here, it was really uh, a really wonderful opportunity, not only professionally, but also like for my family. So we could just kind of be in one place um, and feel a little bit more settled with the baby, which is really nice. Um, so in that regard, I feel like it's a lot easier to just do the show here because I just like I have my home, I have my place, I'm not like moving all the time, you know. Um, but what is fun about touring is like you're doing the show in, you know, different cities, different states, and the vibe of the audience in each place is very different. You know, even though it's the same exact show, it's the same lines, the reaction and like, you know, the reaction from each city, each group of audiences is, is very different. And it's interesting to kind of see how the show plays in different parts of the country or different towns. Um, and it's cool. And you're you're always in a different theater. The theaters are bigger and smaller. So the show is always kind of evolving and always changing. So that's really cool. Um, it's cool to see like, oh, these people in Des Moines are like really warm or like very like they laugh a lot, you know, whereas like another city might be really into it, but just like very quiet and like listening the whole time, you know. Um, so it's, it's really fascinating. Um, but here on Broadway, it feels a little bit more um, I a little bit more intimate because the theaters on Broadway, even though they're big, they're not as big as the ones on tour can be like 4000 seats like they're huge, you know, here Broadway is like. 1,000, 1,500 seats. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels a little bit more intimate. The audience is definitely closer to you. Um, and also, it's I think there's something special about doing the show, this show specifically in New York. Because, you know, who knows how many people in the audience were here during 9-11, had their own personal experience with the attack. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's something really special about that. I know you mentioned that every place that you toured and, you know, performed in, every audience is different. So from, you know, the touring perspective, what was your favorite location? I had a lot of really great cities, but I will say one of the cities that really surprised me that I didn't know anything about was Fayetteville, Arkansas. <laughs> I had never been to Arkansas in general. And, <laughs> right? and I didn't really know what to expect about Fayetteville. And it was such a cool little town like in the mountains it was so green and beautiful and um surprisingly very liberal this town and um, it was a college town as well and they had a couple other theater companies there like theater squared and stuff and it was just like really cool people really cool vibe like great food um i don't know like the audiences were wonderful they loved the show I like really, really enjoyed my time in Fayetteville. I was like so surprised. <laughs> Me and my husband were like, are we going to move to Fayetteville, Arkansas? This place is awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was like great yoga studios. It was, it was oh. a cool place. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And when you yeah. were, when you were in these different locations, like what was the amount of time that you would stay in them? It depends. It was the shortest amount of time was was a week. And then some places we would stay like two or three weeks. Um, so it just depends on like kind of how big the city is and how much of an audience there would be. Like we were in L.A. for two weeks because it's a much bigger city and they wanted to give more people opportunity to see the show. Whereas in Fayetteville, like a week was enough, you know, time. Right. Yeah. OK. And, you know, you mentioned that you had a baby during the pandemic and then you returned a few months later to continue on with the tour. And now you're at the Broadway company. So what has the whole experience been like to, for you? Oh, my God, it's been a whirlwind. Um, it feels really it feels especially after the pandemic and having a baby, it feels really um, I feel really grateful and lucky to be able to do a show like this, to be able to tell a story that's like all about kindness and about connection, which is, I think, something we all are really craving right now, especially after the pandemic. Um, and so I feel lucky that like this is the show that I'm returning to rather than just kind of like a flashy musical that doesn't have a lot of substance or something, you know, like this like is really meaningful. And like, even though obviously there's like so many funny parts to the show and there's like lots of laughter, it's also really moving and touching. Um, when I first saw the show, I saw it years before I even joined it. Um, I was doing a different show at the time and I just went to go see it because I heard it was great. And I, I mean, the show ended, I was just like bawling my eyes out, like just a mess, you know, but like, but also left feeling hopeful and feeling like good about humanity and about people. Um, 
So I feel really lucky to be telling a story like that because I think that's kind of what we all really need right now, you know? Exactly. I mean, at least I feel like I need that, you know? I definitely feel like from like the way that the show, the, the show was basically told, it definitely gave like a great moment of like inhale, exhale, and like, yeah. a, like a moment to step away from the reality of our everyday yeah. life, you know? Yeah, totally. What do you think makes this show so unique? And uh, what do you think viewers will enjoy when they watch the show? Um, I think part of the uniqueness of the show, like we talked about before, is the staging. It's like there's not a lot of crazy big sets. It's kind of like we make a plane or we make an office or we make a, you know, um, a, a restaurant to all with chairs and tables like right in front of your eyes. And I think that it's really cool for the audience to see that. Um, and then also it's unique because it's, it's like it's such a specific centralized story to uh you know gander this tiny town in newfoundland but the themes and everything that it's talking about is like so global and so universal and anybody can relate to it you know um so it's like it's unique in the sense that like it's such a unique story this has never happened before and who knows if it'll ever happen again and the fact that it's true um you know when i saw it i said to my husband like i can't believe this actually happened and i didn't know about it like why wasn't this on the news and stuff you know like right. i mean I, i'm sure it was and i might i might have just missed it and i think it played on the news more in canada than it did in the u.s um but like I just can't believe that it actually happened. You know, these people took in 7,000 strangers over five days and they were a town of 9,000 people. So it was almost like double the amount of people that they had in the town. And they like literally opened their homes and, you know, fed them and clothed them. And it's just like so beautiful. And and like, there's like that one line in the show where like, I don't know if this would happen in the US or back at home, you know? And it's like, I don't know if it would. And I think that's, the reason this show exists and I think the reason the show is uh, such an important story to tell because like maybe we can inspire people to kind of behave this way in the future should you know god forbid something like this ever happen again you know definitely like I'm the same person when I before I watch anything I like to do some research so I was just like you I had no clue that this was actual event that actually happened like of Gander yeah. and the people and taking in everyone and helping them like I didn't know that was a, like that happened and that yeah just even more when watching the show I was like I was telling my friend I was like this actually happened can you believe that yeah there's actually been a quite a few now documentaries um uh with footage that you can actually watch over like over those five days um that are really really fascinating and then you can actually see the the real people in gander um and we've actually also met a lot of the plane people that's what they call them the people that were stuck on the planes that were stuck there for five days um especially going around on tour especially when we were like in texas because a lot of the planes were going to texas mm -hmm. um we met a lot of plane people that were like that you're basically telling my story like I was there I was in the plane and I got stuck there for five days and I stayed at Beulah's house I stayed at you know whoever's house and it's just like amazing to hear their story no, absolutely absolutely and I know you mentioned it a little bit before do you have a favorite line or moment from the show oh, do I have a favorite line one of my favorite lines it's not my line to say but I just love hearing it is when Janice is uh playing the girl at walmart and she's like would you like to take a shower I'm, I'm like thank you for shopping at walmart would you like to come to my house to take a shower i think it's just so funny um because like things like that actually did really happen and it's just one of my favorite lines <laughs> and a few fun questions that i have is we talked about you know you being on tour do you have mm -hmm. funny or memorable moments that come to mind well every once in a while you know, mishaps happen on stage, of course, we're all human. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> I don't know why this happened. This is such a, a random story, but like, I don't, I don't remember which city we were in, but I was like really tired. We had traveled all day to the city and I was just like, my brain was foggy and we were doing the show and I was like trying to like, you know, just be in it. And at the end, my, one of my lines is, um, uh, we're, we're like kind of wrapping up and I tell like what happened to the rare bonobo chimpanzees mm -hmm. and Doug, my husband says, um, Unga made it to the Columbus Zoo, the chimpanzee. And then my line is supposed to be, um, and soon after she had a baby, which they named Gander, right? 
Um, but for some reason in my mind, as I'm saying the line, I'm like, oh my God, what was the name of the baby? I can't remember the name, even though it's the name of the town. And I was like, which they named? And then all I could think of was Carol, the name Carol. And I, I don't even, <laughs> that's not even a part of the show at all. Nobody's named Carol. And I almost said Carol. And I was like, which they named Ander. So I kind of said Kander. Um, and now it's this running joke between me and my castmates about, you know, this name, this monkey named Carol. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't actually say Carol. <laughs> I feel like you're so like people get so into the show they wouldn't even realize it <laughs> <laughs> but they would be like why is she telling us specifically that they named the monkey <laughs> <laughs> all right my next question is if you could go back in time and see a single production what would it be wow you know what i think i would want to see barbara streisand and funny girl when she first started i think she was like 20 or 19 or 20 or something and I just love Barbara Streisand and I actually haven't seen this revival that's playing right now, but I love the musical and it would have been amazing to see Barbara Streisand. Ah, oh, that would be cool. <laughs> and my final question, what's next for you? What's next? I'm not sure what's next yet, which show. Um, I'm, I might, I'm kind of excited to like have a little moment and just like maybe take a month and chill <laughs> and breathe. Um, uh, yeah, my husband and I and the baby are, we're moving to a new apartment in a couple weeks. So, you know, and then I'm done with this show basically at the end of September. So I think we're just going to kind of get settled and then I'll start auditioning for the next thing and we'll see. Congratulations on your new apartment. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I'm excited. <laughs> and I can't wait to see whatever show that you end up next in the future. You're going to do amazing. I loved your character. The funny moments in the show, absolutely amazing. And I recommend it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It's so nice chatting with you. Of course. Thank you.